ANA position statement, the nurse's role when a patient requests medical aid in dying. Hello, today we are going to be talking about the American Nurses Association position statement on the nurse's role when a patient requests medical aid in dying, which will be referred to as MAID or MAID. This video is being brought to you on behalf of the ANA Center for Ethics and Human Rights. Dr. Marsha Bozic contributed to the production of this educational video resource on behalf of the ANA Ethics Advisory Board. The goal for this position statement is not to frame or a stance for or against medical aid in dying, but rather to frame the nurse's compassionate response within the scope of practice, based on the code of ethics for nurses with interpretive statements. The code is clear in Interpretive Statement 1.4 that a nurse's ethical response to a patient's inquiry about medical aid in dying is not based on the intention to end life. Rather, it is a response to the patient's quality of life self-assessment based on the loss of independence, inability to enjoy meaningful activities, loss of dignity, or unmanaged pain and suffering. First and foremost, nurses are ethically prohibited from administering the medical aid in dying medication. Nurses must be comfortable supporting patients with end-of-life conversations. It is important that the nurse understands the motivation and context behind the request for medical aid in dying. An often cited argument against medical aid in dying requests involves concern about patients whose request is the result of a treatable depression, fear of becoming a burden, or even worse, coercion. Nurses should assess an advocate to optimize palliative and hospice care services. Knowledge about medical aid in dying laws in your state of practice is crucial for a competent conversation. Nurses must also reflect on their personal values related to medical aid in dying and be aware of how personal values inform the nurse's ability to provide objective information in response to a patient's requests. Medical aid in dying is legal in several states. Euthanasia, however, is illegal in every state. What are the differences between euthanasia and medical aid in dying? The primary difference is intent. In medical aid in dying, the intent is to alleviate suffering. The intent is not to end life. The second difference is who makes the request. MAID honors competent autonomous patients' request for assistance in alleviating suffering. Another significant difference is who completes the act. MAID medications are administered by the patient themselves. All MAID laws require the patient to self-administer. Nurses, other healthcare professionals, or family members are not allowed to administer the medications in medical aid in dying legislation. Requesting medical aid in dying has been described as the ultimate exercise of autonomy. Fear of intractable pain and suffering associated with dying are very real concerns for people at the end of life. Requests for medical aid in dying often originate from fear of unmanaged physical pain, suffering, and loss of control. Some healthcare professionals might argue that palliative and hospice care are designed to address the symptoms of pain and suffering. Thus, medical aid in dying is not necessary. Indeed, since legalizing medical aid in dying in Oregon, there has been significant growth in the use of palliative and hospice utilization. A central feature to ethical nursing practice is the care of patients. Requesting medical aid in dying is ensuring exploration of all alternatives, including high-quality palliative care and aggressive management of pain and suffering. Further research is needed to better understand the medical aid in dying process and the variables impacting patient decisions. Nurses are ethically prohibited from administering medical aid in dying medication. A nurse is not actively participating in medical aid in dying when supporting dialogue, assessing the context for the request for medical aid in dying, as well as decision-making capacity and patient understanding. Providing factual information in a neutral manner or responding to the patient's request to be present is again an important way nurses can be involved. These nursing actions are aligned with the ethical commitment to support patients in clarifying their goals of care and making fully informed decisions. The challenges of requiring self-administration include denying access 
made to patients who are physically not able to self-ingest, such as those with quadriplegia or other paralysis. These are important points to discuss with patients who are inquiring about medical aid in dying. ANA offers the following recommendations. Nurses must remain objective when discussing end-of-life options with patients who are exploring medical aid in dying. Nurses have an ethical duty to be knowledgeable about this evolving issue. Nurses must be aware of their personal values regarding medical aid in dying and how these values might affect their nurse-patient relationship. Nurses have the right to conscientiously object to being involved in aid in dying processes. The code states that, quote, respect for patient decisions does not require that the nurse agree with or support all patient choices, end of quote. Nurses who work in jurisdictions where medical aid in dying is legal have an obligation to inform their employers if they would predictably exercise a conscious-based objection so that appropriate assignments could be made. Nurses should protect the confidentiality of healthcare professionals who are present during aid in dying process, as well as the confidentiality of those who choose not to be present. Let's consider a case study. Mr. Silver is a 68-year-old man and was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer with metastases to the liver and the bone. During a routine health visit, Mr. Silver tells the registered nurse case manager who had an established relationship with him I want to die on my terms. I don't want to linger. You are my nurse. Is there any way you can help me? So how do you think that nurse case manager should respond? While there's no specific right way to respond to Mr. Silver's request, as with all nursing care, assessment should be the first step. After the assessment and later at an interprofessional team meeting, the nurse should think about the questions that are listed here on the slide. Does the agency have a policy regarding MAID? Does the agency have policies regarding conscientious objection? Nurses should identify whether their organization does in fact have these policies. In addition, the entire interprofessional team should remain aware of the state's current MAID legislation. Three months later, Mr. Silver completes a request for obtaining medical aid in dying. He asked the nurse case manager to be present when he self-administers the life-ending medication. What should the nurse consider prior to agreeing? If you were the nurse in this case, how would your personal and professional values impact your decision on whether to be present or not? What actions would be appropriate for the nurse to enact if present when Mr. Silver completes his intention to and his life by medical aid in dying? And what should the nurse do if Mr. Silver was unable to manipulate or access the medications due to a decrease in dexterity? Thank you very much for participating in this discussion of the nurse's role when patients request medical aid in dying position statement. To see the full position statement, please go to nursingworld.org forward slash ethics. Thank you very much for participating.